Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen and today we're talking 2021 anticipated releases. is in just a couple of weeks so now it's time to figure out what new books are being released which ones I want to add on my to be read list and just get excited about all the new and exciting books that are coming out in 2021 but before we get into these books make sure you're subscribed to my channel and make sure that you click the notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video also you can follow me on Twitter and Goodreads I will link those down in the description box below, as well as my Amazon wish list if you ever want to gift me a book. So firstly, I want to talk about three books that are coming out in January. So get excited because these are coming really, really soon. The first of those being Concrete Rose by Angie Thomas, which is the prequel to The Hate You Give, which is one of my favorite books ever. Concrete Rose takes place 17 years before the events of The Hate You Give, and it explores black boyhood and black manhood. We are following 17 year old Maverick Carter, who is the father of Star and Seven within The Hate You Give, but now we're following him and learning his story, his childhood, his upbringing as the son of a former gang legend. And so he has the opportunity to be a King Lord himself. But soon Maverick finds out that he is going to be a father. He's going to be the father of his first child, Seven. And now he's figuring out how to balance being a King Lord, raising a child and staying in school. But he is soon offered the chance to go straight and so he is trying to be different and takes this opportunity but of course growing up surrounded by gangs and being in that community is going to lead to some problems and issues if you're trying to live a good and normal life as well. Concrete Rose hits the stores on January 18th. The next book I'm super excited for is the third book in the Curse Breaker series, A Vow So Bold and Deadly. The first book was A Curse So Dark and Lonely and the second book was A Heart So Fierce and Broken. I still have only read the first book but I definitely need to get to A Heart So Fierce and Broken ASAP given that this third book comes out on January 26. So basically a month away we are going to get the third book in the series and I need to read the second book. The Curse Breaker series, at least the first book, A Curse So Dark and Lonely, is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. A very powerful enchantress has put a curse onto Prince Rin that he has to repeat the autumn of his 18th birthday over and over again until he can find a girl to fall in love with him. And then we have Harper who has cerebral palsy and she lives in Washington DC. One night she is trying to save someone and all of a sudden she is pulled into a magical world and she meets Prince Rin so basically we're trying to see if Harper is the one that's going to break Prince Rin's curse. I really really enjoyed A Curse of Dark and Lonely. I love reading retellings of Beauty and the Beast and so of course I had to read this one. I just haven't picked up the second book yet for literally no reason and so now I'm gonna do that ASAP because this book comes out January 26th so I need to be prepared. This next book also comes out on January 26th and it's a book that I recently discovered through looking through just books that are coming out in 2021 and a Along with the cover being gorgeous, the synopsis just sounds like my type of story and I'm now very excited to read this book and that is going to be Wings of Ebony by J.L. This is J.L.'s debut fantasy novel following Rue who is a black teen from Houston and who happens to have some godly ancestry. One day her mother is shot dead on her doorstep and Rue's life changes forever. She is whisked away to live with a father she never knew and she is separated from her younger sister and taken to Gizon or Gizon which is a hidden an island of magic wilders. Rue is the only half god half human living there and one day she breaks Gaizon's no leave law because she wants to return to Houston to be with her sister for the anniversary of their mom's death. But when she gets back to Houston she realizes that black kids are being forced into crime and violence and discovers that her younger sister is falling towards the same forces that took over their mom. So Rue has to embrace her true identity and do everything she can use her powers to save her neighborhood and everybody that she knows and loves. Okay so switching on over to books that are coming out in February. The first book that I have is titled The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna and this is the first book in a new series titled Deathless. It hits the stores on February 9th. I also just discovered this book and again I read the synopsis and it just sounds so good that 
that I can't wait for it to come out. We're following 16 year old Dika who lives in fear in anticipation of the upcoming blood ceremony that will determine if she will become a member of her village or not. And so she is hoping and praying that her blood runs red. But on the day of the ceremony, her blood ends up running gold, which is the color of impurity. And so she knows that she's going to face a consequence worse than death. But then a mysterious woman comes in and gives her a choice. Dika can either stay in her village and face her fate, or she can leave to fight for an emperor in an army of girls just like her. These girls are called Alaki and they're near immortals with rare gifts and they're the only ones who can stop the empire's greatest threat. So Dika leaves the only life she knows. She leaves her village to go and prepare for this battle where she discovers a lot of secrets about the empire and about herself. The next book that is coming out February 16th is one that I am very, very much highly anticipating. And that is the fourth book in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series titled A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. If you don't already know, or if you're new to my channel, I love Sarah J Maas. I've read Throne of Glass, I have read Akatar already, and I've read Crescent City. I am currently doing an Akatar reread as part of the Accord Along or the Akatar Read Along hosted by Mel and Molly. So basically A Court of Thorns and Roses is another Beating the Beast retelling and it involves fairies, magical kingdoms, love triangles, just lots of violence and plot twists. Trust me, you're going to want to read A Court of Thorns and Roses, join this read along, or just read it when you have the time because it truly is a very good series. All right, so there are three books that I am interested in that are coming out in March. The first one might be a bit of a surprise to y'all because of my thoughts of the second book in the series. Nevertheless, I am anticipating this release to see where this series goes. And that is Covet by Tracy Wolf, which is the third book in the Crave series. For those who are new to my channel and have no idea what I'm talking about, I absolutely loved Crave, which is the first book in the series. And I was so disappointed in book two, which was Crush, that came out earlier this year, a couple of months ago. And so I'm kind of iffy about this third book because how do you love the first book so much and hate the second book so much? Like, where's the third book gonna stand? But that's why I'm still anticipating this book because I need to know whether or not I gotta throw this whole series away or if I can just throw the second book away, you know? Also, there is a review on my channel for these first two books. If you are curious to know what my thoughts are on the two books, I will link it in the cards above and down below in the description box. But yeah, Covet comes out on March 2nd and I will be reading it. I read Crush on the day that it was released or a couple of days after its release day, but I don't think I'm gonna be as quick to read Covet as I was with Crush. And quick synopsis of Crave, because I have talked about it a bunch on this channel, but in Crave, we follow Grace, who has tragically lost both of her parents and is sent to Alaska to live with her uncle and her cousin. Her uncle is the Dean of the Catmere Academy, where soon Grace realizes that it's a school for supernatural creatures. You have vampires, werewolves, witches, all that jazz. And here she meets Jackson, who is a vampire, and then they fall in love, of course. And there is also somebody trying to kill Grace at the school. And that's another big plot line of the story, is trying to figure out who is trying to kill Grace and for what reason. This next book comes out on March 9th, and that is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley, which is a standalone debut fantasy novel. In this book, we are following two characters Tamsin and Rin. Tamsin is a very powerful witch who committed the worst magical sin and is now cursed with the inability to love. The only way that she can get these feelings back, even for just a little bit, is by stealing love from others. And then we have Rin, who is a source. Sources are people who are made of magic but are unable to use the magic themselves. Sources are required to train with the coven as soon as they discover their abilities, but Rin is the only person taking care of her sick father, and so she keeps her abilities as being a source secret. But soon Rin's father catches this plague that is ravaging the kingdom and so Rin strikes a deal with Tamsin, which is that if Tamsin can help Rin find the powerful witch who created this plague, then Rin will give Tamsin the ability to love. This next book also comes out on March 9th, and that is going to be After Age Eve Brown by Talia Hibbert, which is the third and final book in the Brown Sisters trilogy. In this one, we are following the youngest of the Brown Sisters, Eve. She ends up messing with a bed and breakfast owner named Jacob. Eve's life is a mess, whereas Jacob's life is very controlled and planned and perfect. 
perfect. And so when Eve comes into this bed and breakfast and interviews for the position of chef, Jacob's like, absolutely not. But soon the bed and breakfast becomes understaffed and Eve is the only option for this chef position. And so Eve and Jacob, they just become enemies and just hate each other while at work. But soon all this time spent together and the animosity building between them leads to a lovely love story between the two. I have read Get a Life Chloe Brown. I enjoyed that story a lot, but I still have yet to retake a hint Danny Brown. Sometimes I'm really bad with reading sequels to series and then other times I just read the entire like trilogy or series like back to back. It really depends but in this case I haven't read the second installment in the series yet but I do own it as an ebook and I do plan on reading it very very soon before Actor Age Eve Brown comes out so that I can read them in order even though this is a series that you can read in whatever order because it doesn't necessarily follow the same characters it's just follows the same family. All right moving into April where I again have three books that I am anticipating. The first First being The Cost of Knowing by Brittany Morris. Brittany Morris may sound familiar and that's because she is the author of Slay which I read earlier this year and I absolutely love that. It's definitely making the top 10 books of the year for me and Brittany Morris became an instant by author and after hearing about this book and reading the synopsis I feel like this one is not going to disappoint me either so I'm adding it to my list and so should you guys. The Cost of Knowing follows 16 year old Rufus who has the power of seeing the future which which may sound good but Alex views this as a curse distracting him from having a normal life because every time he touches an object he sees into the future. One day Alex touches a photo of his brother and that gives him a vision of his brother's imminent death. So Alex begins racing against time to try to save his brother. This next book coming out in April on April 20th is titled Witch is Deep in Gold by Sienna and Smart. I remember when this cover was revealed on social media because I just saw it all over my Twitter feed and everywhere people were talking about this beautiful cover and I agree it's a very beautiful cover. For this one I'm just going to read the short little Goodread synopsis that they have because like I said I've never really looked into this book I just really loved the cover. Divided by their cast, united by their vengeance, Araya has spent her life in a cell but every day brings her closer to freedom and vengeance. Jasmine is the queen's daughter but unlike her sister before her she has no intention of dying to strengthen her mother's power. Sworn enemies these two witches enter a precarious alliance to take down a mutual threat but revenge is a bloody pursuit and nothing is certain except the links they would go to win this game. So it sounds like it's got some enemies involved in it and some magic so again that just sounds like a book that's right up my alley and it's also a Jamaican inspired fantasy and is the author's debut novel. So. Of course I had to add this next one on my list because of how much I loved the first two books that I read this year and the book that I'm talking about is the third book in the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout and the third book is titled The Crown of Gilded Bones. I love this series with all my heart. It is a fantasy romance book with a lot of steamy scenes so be warned if you're not into that with your fantasy that there is a lot of romance in this book. Usually in a fantasy like the romance is on the side it's just like a subplot line and not really the main event of the book but in this series the romance is a main part of the book and you're going to get a lot of scenes back to back. Every other chapter there's going to be something romantic happening and so if you're the type of person who loves fantasy and romance and wants to see that combined in a book and that's done well I would say this is the perfect series for you. I am so happy that I read these two books this year. They became fast favorites and now I want to read more of JLA's works. I know that she has like a million books published and I just never read any of them. So now I might just start a little journey of reading all of JLA's books or at least some more of her books. And if you've already read from Blood and Ash series I would highly suggest looking into the fan art for the different characters because you're gonna find some really really good pictures of your faves. And I don't even look at fan art for most books but my friends send periodic pictures of Poppy and Hawk and Castile and Kieran and everybody and I'm just like wow these people need to be real because I love them so much. The last two books I'm going to talk about in this video are both released in June. The first one being Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Ayamide and that one is coming out on June 10th. One I am super excited about. It popped up on my Twitter feed a little while ago and I read the little one sentence blurb and I fell in love with it and had to immediately add it to my list of most anticipated releases for 2021. This is a thriller 
thriller that dives deep into institutionalized racism and is also this author's debut novel. In this book we are at Nivea's private academy where obviously there's a lot of money and students come from money and that kind of background. However the students here are less than perfect. An anonymous texter Aces is bringing two students dark secrets to light and of course these students are two black students at this school. Devin's private photos are going public and head girl Chiamaka isn't afraid to get what she wants but soon people are gonna find out the price that she paid for this power. Someone is out to get these black students and I want to know why. Why are you coming for the black kids? I'm usually not one to anticipate a thriller book coming out but this one just sounded so good that I had to add it to my list and I will definitely be reading it as soon as it comes out. The last book I'm going to talk about in this video is released on June 15th and that is going to be Blood Like Magic by Liesl Sambury, which is the first book in the series titled Blood Like Magic. And can we just look at that cover? Like, wow, that is so cute. Like that cover alone made me click on the Goodreads link and read the synopsis. This is once again another author's debut novel, fantasy novel, and in this one we're following a teen witch who was given the horrifying task of sacrificing her first love in order to save her family's magic. However, Voya, the main character, has never been in love and so first she has to find somebody to fall in love with, which she is going to do through this genetic matchmaking program. If she fails one more time because she already has failed her test once, her entire family loses Loses their magic forever. Zoya really needs to find a man to fall in love with and go through with killing him, sacrificing her first love in order to save her family and their magic. So yeah that really just sounds very interesting and I'm really here for all these enemies to lovers and having to sacrifice people you love in order to save family and things. I see that's a common theme in some of these books that I am interested in. So that makes me interested to see the different ways that this trope can be done. Wow I almost forgot to mention Jade Legacy which is the third and final book in the Greenbone saga that is coming out in 2021 and is by Fonda Lee but there is not an official release date for this book it just says it's coming out in 2021 so I do not know when it's going to come out if there is a date and I'm just not aware please let me know in the comments but that is also a book that I am very highly anticipating because I love Jade City so much Jade War was good too but Jade City was just that book for me earlier this year when I read it so yes I'm excited for that one too so that wraps up some of the the books that I'm interested in for 2021 and it's looking like next year is going to be a really good reading year for me as the books that I mentioned all seem really good and if I had to predict they're gonna be four or five stars for me. I only talked about books that are going to be released up to about June in the year because I do plan on doing a part two of this video in June and talk about some of my anticipated reads that are coming out in the second half of 2021 because we don't want to get too excited for books that are not coming out for a long long time so I want to focus my excitement on books that are coming out very soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you were able to add some books to your 2021 anticipated releases list as well. And if you have a book that you're excited for that I didn't mention, please let me know about it because I'm always on the lookout for new books to read and add, especially if they're an author of color or if it's a debut novel. I love supporting authors of color and authors who are publishing for the first time. That is all from me today. Please again make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you're not already and click the notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a video. Please give this video a big like, comment down below, and if you made it to the end of this video please leave a emoji with the glasses because you know we're nerds, book nerds, getting ready for the new year of book releases so I think that's the perfect emoji for this video and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!